Hey everybody, I'm Calvin Minson. And I'm Alexa Benson. We're kind of critics, roll that intro. So, for this episode, if you haven't already seen the previous one, we reviewed Camp Coral, and which was a, a, a spin-off of the third Spongebob movie, Spongebob Sponge on the Run, when it was originally named It's a Wonderful Sponge. And <laughs> It's a wonderful sponge. I think we all know what that's uh, hearing. Yeah. Like, um, so, first off... We are obviously reviewing the movie, and if you don't already know, it was supposed to release in 2020, but due to uh, current world events, they uh, had to delay it, but instead they, in like late 2020, they, Paramount, the people who own Nickelodeon and the third Spongebob movie, they released the third Spongebob movie on Netflix in everywhere except Canada and the United States. So, and, uh, and in February of 2021, they released it in only Canada and the U.S. on Paramount+. Plus. Yeah, uh, as soon as we could, we watched Sponge on the Run. We were just so excited. I was... Like, before they said they were bringing it to Paramount Plus here in the U.S., I was thinking of of getting a VPN. Do you know what a VPN is? Uh, yes, but for all the kids that are watching that don't, you better explain. Yeah. So it's where you pay a monthly fee, like a subscription service, and what you can do is you can make it so no one will see your browsing data, so you can keep all your internet data hidden. And the main thing it does is allows you to access different versions of streaming services, like uh, the French version of, of Netflix. And like, so I was thinking of French getting... French version of Netflix? <laughs> I was thinking of getting a VPN so I could uh, just change our Netflix to a... Uh, a diff to a uh, Netflix in like a different part of the world where then we could watch it, but just watching it on my Paramount Plus a few weeks later is is fine. I think you have uh for, I think you've already used up like uh three fourths, uh, <laughs> you've talked three fourths at a time. So, <laughs> um, what is what was your favorite part of Sponge on the Run? Well. The best part is definitely the animation. It just looks gorgeous. Mm. Like, it's the best looking... It's the best Spongebob has ever looked. It looks way better than hand-drawn. It just looks amazing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the plot. That's probably one of my favorite parts. Um, hmm. Like, most people say it's like rehashing older episodes where Spongebob mm. loses Gary and has to find him, and he, like... And, but, like, I kind of think that it's good that they just did that kind of rehash plot, because they were originally going to make it so, and I am not joking, alien cats that come to Bikini Bottom and try to take over Bikini Bottom and send it to space, <laughs> where there's Nicolas Cage riding a tiger in space. Nicholas Cage and a space tiger, and Bubbles the Dolphin from the second Spongebob movie would return. I was about to say, wait, wasn't there like a, something like that, like a dolphin in the second movie? Well, I was not you about to say that. Well, he was going to return, but like, that seems too crazy of a plot, and like, Stephen Hillenburg said before he died that he always wanted Spongebob to just have simple plots, nothing like gigantic, and... They've done that with the show and the two movies and everything Spongebob related. So doing a one where there's alien cats and Nicolas Cage riding a, riding a space tiger does not seem like the kind of thing Steven Hillenburg would, would want. So they just wanted to keep it like a story that Hillenburg made himself so they could pay respect to, the, to him. So I really like that. What yeah. Was, what was your favorite part of the movie? Um... 
Probably when they went when they drove to Vegas. I think that was like <laughs> the lost city of Atlantic City. I think. <laughs> well, it looked like Vegas. So, um, speaking of Atlantic City, do we still not know where it is? No, but I hear that it was Veal at one point, but the rubble has decomposed, like fallen apart. Because it's been sitting there for millions of years at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, so back to SpongeBob. Yeah. So, uh, about the movie, like hmm. in the trailers, I feel like they gave us a little taste of Camp Girl and the movie. Yeah. Because it showed uh, SpongeBob saying, "I'm ready," and I and uh, finding uh, oh, Gary for the first time. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we ki- and then we fast forward to when he loses Gary. So it's a little bit of Camp Coral because it's uh, SpongeBob's past in the, both the trailer and Camp Coral. And then it's the movie, uh, both in the trailer and the movie. So I feel like it gets it gives us a bo- uh, both of the show and the movie. Yeah. So, but like, kid SpongeBob in the trailer and in the movie are, is just so cute as well. I as, know. Like, baby SpongeBob and baby Wait. Gary are so cute. Wait. If... If everyone loves baby SpongeBob, right? Mm-hmm. Why don't they just why didn't they just make a baby SpongeBob stuffy? They they have made those. <gasps> it was it, that's actually really interesting because the third SpongeBob movie was released in theaters for two days in Canada in a few theaters. And you know those like plushies they sell that are like based off movie characters? Like when the movie comes out in theaters, they sell those plushies. Uh-huh. Well, they had those for the third Spongebob movie in those uh, oh. two days. It was in the Canadian theaters. They sold a adorable little uh, Camp Coral Spongebob plush and a uh, Patrick and Plankton and Gary versions. And now they go for for like 500 bucks for just a Spongebob one because they're so rare now. Say my name is Calvin and I wish I had a Spongebob baby, a baby Spongebob stuffy. My name is Calvin, and I wish I had a baby Spongebob plushie. They're, it's just so adorable. Spongebob. Like, um... But, like, I kind of feel like in the movie, the Camp Coral segments were kind of just, like, shoved in there just so people could know about the new Camp Coral show on Paramount+. Plus. Like, it just seems like they weren't... Like, you could take out those segments and... It wouldn't really make a difference in the movie. Yeah. Like, speaking of Camp Coral, do they have an intro to their show? I don't know if they do. I kind of remember it. But, like, Hmm. uh... Hmm. Now we're just talking about Camp Coral, so... Hmm. So, overall... (laughs) So, overall, what would you rate the, uh... Oh, I think we should introduce a new rating system. A critic, but we should make it so, like, if you get a a three out of ten, you're no critic. If you're, if it's like a five out of ten, like three out of ten or lower, it's a not a critic. If it's a five, six, or seven, then it is like four, five, six, and seven. Then it is a kind of critic. Then for eight, nine, and ten, it is. Critic status. We should do that as rating. So- By the way, guys, I am not going to give every every single thing a ten out of ten because in school, I was known as the harsh critic. So, what would you rate it like? The movie. Yeah. Okay. How about we rate both Camp Coral and the movie? We because- rated Camp Coral in the last episode. Yeah. What? What? I don't think we-, we did. I think we. Yeah. Well, what? What would you rate the? Specifically, the third Spongebob movie. Uh, I would rate it a 6 out of 10. But I hate, I, I want to know more backstory on, uh, on the, what is his name? The King of Atlantis? King, uh, Poseidon? Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to know more of a backstory on him. Oh, yeah. Like, why he wants, why he wants these snails. I know what, I, we already yeah. know oh. why he wants them, but, like, just, we, I think we should know more about him. Yeah. 
By the way, King Poseidon was voiced by the same voice actor as Bubbles the Dolphin. Really? Yeah. So, uh, I think I would rate the movie probably the same as you. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more episodes of Kinda Critics. Oh, Baby Otter, do you want to say something? Yeah! Please subscribe, and we get to do more kind of critics episodes, and more chicken reacts episodes, and, oh, Calvin, what if they don't subscribe? Well, they gotta subscribe for Baby Otto from the kind of, from the chicken reacts TV show oh. on my channel. Please so, subscribe. So, as always, I'm Calvin Minson. I'm Baby Otto. Baby Otto, this isn't my, my turn. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm Alexa Benson. We're kind of critics. Sayonara. Uh -huh.